So uh, let's let's get into it. So uh, thanks everybody for attending. Uh, I'm super excited about the uh, topic that we're chatting uh, through today. So I'm joined here with by uh, Ram Natarajan from ThoughtSpot to talk a little bit about their journey on how they got to modern stack uh, for their analytics stack. Before getting into it, uh, I should do some quick intros. Uh, I'm Dan Neiman, CRO over here at Hevo. Uh, and super duper excited to introduce Ram. Uh, again, he's he's the head of data engineering over at ThoughtSpot, and uh, I'm sure you guys will get uh, a lot of tidbits from Ram today as he is a pragmatic practitioner of this stuff, as you'll come to find. So I'm sure you'll have lots of questions for him. Uh, Ram, I don't want to steal your thunder. Would, would you mind doing a quick intro? Sure, Dan. Thank you. It's great to be here. Ram Kumar Natarajan, and you can call me Ram. Um, I have been in this data field for more than a decade and a half. I started my career as an online journalist, but transitioned to data and analytics on the way. Uh, my joining in Infosys paved the way for data. Uh, I had uh, the opportunity to work for Apple, Bank of America, Royal Bank of Scotland, Citizens Bank, uh, Zion's Bank Corporation, a regional bank based in Utah. It's all about data. It's time. Awesome. So, um, you know, I don't want to presuppose that everybody knows who ThoughtSpot and Hebo are, although I suspect anybody who made it to this call probably knows who our companies are. But would you mind giving a quick intro on what ThoughtSpot's all about? Yes, as the text reads, uh, ThoughtSpot is an AI powered uh, analytics company uh, focusing majorly on creating a fact driven world with the easiest to use analytics platform. When you say easiest, trust me, this is the most user-friendly tool you have you would have ever come across in life. And ThoughtSpot's mission is to empower uh, or enable the users to ask questions in natural language and receive uh, valuable insights from the data as answers. Yeah, so we're obviously super proud to say that ThoughtSpot is a Hebo customer, uh, specifically because ThoughtSpot was doing like Gen AI and NLP before those were cool. Obviously, everyone says that now, but uh, obviously we're super psyched to have Ram on the call with us. I suspect, again, anybody who's on this call probably knows what Hebo is already. Uh, we are an ELT platform. So obviously, in order to use tools like a ThoughtSpot or a DBT, you got to get the data into your cloud warehouse environment first. Uh, and that's what, what we specialize in. Um, and, and with that, let me kind of just get on to the agenda and, and what we're going to talk about. So, you know, uh, what's interesting about Ram and what I've come to learn in prepping for this webinar is that Ram has been on this modern, modernization journey at ThoughtSpot on multiple iterations. And I don't want to steal the thunder, but we're going to go from on-premise ETL to cloud to ELT, and he's going to take us through it. And he'll take us through not only the journey, uh, what some of the benefits are that he got at the end, but also, uh, you know, my favorite part is the, the practitioner level best practices, which is like, okay, nobody migrates data pipelines for fun. There has to be an ROI to it. Uh, you know, it's like data integration is a hard, dirty job. And he'll give us some of the benefits, but also some of the gotchas and things like how to do the migrations, how to plan for them. So that's the agenda for today. So uh, before getting into like how the, the journey happened, let's, let's talk a little bit about the end game like, where are you right now? What are some of the pipelines that you have? What are the, some of the sources that you're ingesting into your environment? What is your data stack, et cetera? Thanks, Dan. Um, as you can see, we have been sourcing data not only from those mentioned in the icons, but uh, 20 plus other systems. Uh, that includes, uh, apart from Salesforce, Google Sheets, we have AWS S3, Pardot, Pendogon, Jira, Salesloft, Slapfy, and so many other sources. Uh, Hevo is our primary LT tool right now. Uh, the source data are loaded into our uh, cloud environment that is Snowflake. As he has mentioned, uh, we transitioned from on-prem system to cloud-based, purely cloud-based. So Snowflake is our environment. Uh, we employed uh, DBT to transform the raw data from the staging environment and load it into our production environment, on top of which uh, we use ThoughtSpot for reporting and analytics purposes. So um, based on this many data sources, it strikes me that the use cases that you've got are obviously beyond a single function. Uh, and I know you run sort of data engineering 
uh, on you know as a whole for ThoughtSpot. Tell us a little bit about some of the use cases that you're driving. Who are your internal customers? Uh, what are some of the problems that they're solving uh, mm -hmm. through this process? Yes, uh, our primary customers are sales, marketing, product. And here we can see. Uh, apart from them, we also uh, serve uh, different teams like engineering, HR, finance, IT, and uh, customer success and support too. Uh, if you take sales, uh, they have the executives have uh, quarterly targets. Um, so we monitor the, we process the data and push that into ThoughtSpot, the targets that are set for them and against what they have achieved, a number of uh, pipelines they have created in the current quarter status or health of the existing pipelines, forecasting, conversion percentage. When a pipeline moves from a particular status to a different stage, they want to find out how many of them have been converted, how many of them are dropped out. So those metrics uh, we are providing the sales team. Sometimes the information are straightforward, uh, but many a times it involves complex calculations. So we create metrics on top of the existing data and push it to them for their consumption. If you take marketing, we have marketing as well as growth marketing. So our marketing team runs different campaigns. It could be digital or live events. Uh, so they measure, the, they count the cost incurred on each campaign, uh, how many leads have been created through these campaigns, uh, how the leads are engaging with the product, uh, the return on investment on such campaigns, and so on. So the marketing growth, so the growth marketing team uh, checks the activities uh, that are performed on websites, how those activities, particularly free trial signups, are getting converted to potential leads, and then uh, what is the next best action at the lead level based on their activities on the website, and so on. These are all provided for the marketing teams. If you take product, uh, they uh, want to measure the performance, how the uh, how hotspot performs in the customer instance. Uh, tickets raised by the customers and how quickly they are addressed. Uh, we also take feedbacks from them through surveys, both for support as well as product. Uh, all these measures are measured and monitored. You know, uh, sorry for an oddball question. On the mm -hmm. product side, what's the database underneath the product again when you're sucking data out of the product? Oh, it's uh, Snowflake. Snowflake. Okay, for the source as well as the target? Yes. Okay, interesting, cool. Um, yeah, and this is pretty interesting for us as a uh, as a vendor to you. These use cases are similar. We we actually have similar use cases in Evo where we use our own software to do the same. Mm -hmm. um, so so pretty cool. So now, I mean, obviously this is a a pretty a well oiled machine at this point. Mm -hmm. But I know this is the end game, and as we all know, integration consistently changes. The data landscape consistently changes. So I know this is not how you started. So. Uh, Let's let's get into the past and and take us through, you know, the life stages, you know, how you guys got got to this modern stack uh, that's working so well now. Oh yeah, it's an interesting story, honestly. So when I joined in 2021, uh, the transition was happening from on-premise to uh, cloud hybrid. It's actually hybrid, both cloud as well as on-premise. Um, we were using ETL technologies like uh, Informatica and Altrix. Uh, this approach uh, had its own downside uh, because it resulted in a lot of technical debt and uh, the scalability was very limited. Uh, Al also, Altrix was designed to operate on Windows and it was not supported uh, on other platforms. Um, and our team members used Mac. So we had to install uh, virtual machine software and run Windows on Mac. Downtime or unable to log in issues were huge. It was uh, costing us a lot with respect to productivity as well as to you know uh, delayed data and reliability. So in 20 towards the end of 2021, 20, uh, beginning of 2022, we decided to uh, move from on-prem on -prem to pure cloud-based environment. Uh, this paved the way for us to shift uh, move away from Altrix to a new tool called Matillion. Um, so. You know, the challenges what we faced with respect to Matillion is um, it needed enormous amount of manual effort in creating a pipeline, just like Altrix or definitely more than Altrix too. Uh, in a pipeline, if you take, uh, every table needed to be added as a component, okay? And every table needed to be authenticated with the user ID, password, or some secret key saved in a library. Uh, yeah, Matillion uh, faced uh, frequent failures in downtime. 
Our team is in India, but our admins are in US. So whenever the tool was down, our data engineers were totally free. We spend majority of the time watching movies or TV shows until the admin logged in. I, of course, the server needed to be restarted. With increasing pipelines and uses, so the cost was also increasing. So this is the history of uh, Matlian. So in sometime around 2023, uh, we were searching for an alternate solution, which was uh, cost effective, at the same time user friendly and you know, uh, less downtime particularly. I have to brag here, uh, when I was searching for a, a better solution, I searched for top ETL tools in the market, ETL or ELT tools. So a lot of opinions and articles were written, but uh, in some or a uh, few of the articles, I, there was a, a name called Hue. It just captured my attention. Uh, I asked my team to explore, validate the data, I validate the tool to find if it will suit our purposes because the pricing model was very interesting unlike uh, Matillion or other tools. And yeah, um, our team declared it's the perfect fit here we are. Awesome. Love it. Shout out to the marketing team. So we, we showed up in the top 10. I don't know where we ranked, but uh, at least we got the eyeballs. So that was important yeah. for us. Well, so, okay. So now you've gone through this journey. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the benefits you got in, in, in moving to Hebo. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we heard a little bit of the problem areas in some of the prior incarnations of your data stack. Take us through some of the benefits that you got and then we can get into best practices and, and how you got there. Sure. So uh, this shift definitely brought us a lot of benefits. Uh, for example, we've managed to save more than 50% of the investments we made in the previous infrastructure, particularly the uh, ATL tool. Apart from uh, the cost uh, perspective, uh, we happened to use a very simple noiseless UI design and navigation, uh, creating new pipelines or loading the data in Snowflake happened in just a few clicks uh, never face downtime i'm not exaggerating here we never face downtime till date um, and uh, the the other feature what um, impressed me was the alert system uh, when a pipeline fails hevo does not fire an alert immediately it attempts it makes two more attempts and then only when the third time when it fails for the third time, it sends an alert saying that it failed for so and so reason. Majority or all of the time, it could be some really of authentication issue with the source system. For example, one of our data engineers quit recently. Uh, he has used his personal uh, login ID to authenticate a pipeline. So when he quit the Salesforce, uh, for example, uh, his ID was removed from there. So the authentication failed. We had to log in and uh, use a generic ID we use across all the systems. It was all fixed and it's running properly till date. So it was, it's not very frequent. It happens occasionally, but it's not Hevo's fault, but it could be, as I said, authentication issue from the uh, source system. The other alert, uh, what we uh, receive is a new object alert. Whenever a new object, a table or a, um, a column is added into one of the existing tables, uh, Hevo captures it during the ingestion time and sends an alert. Uh, I still remember a scenario when I thanked the Salesforce admin for adding a uh, very required field uh, in the Salesforce, one of the Salesforce tables. And I thanked him even before uh, he told me that the field has been added. You you can understand his scenario, right? So he must have puzzled, but that uh, I pay so much of attention to those new objects because uh, we need a certain data to be pulled from Salesforce and pushed to the reporting thoughts power tool. We need quick actions. So if this alert system helps us, it helps us very much. Yeah, no, I, I love that story, especially because you're servicing all these cross-functional internal customers. And if you're finding out about new objects before the app administrator tells you, like it clearly shows that you've got a handle on the pipelines in the business. So, I mean, I love this slide obviously because the benefits are, you know, cost savings on the tool itself increased visibility, sounds mm -hmm. like increased reliability. Yes. One thing we didn't dig on as much, and I hate to double back, but because I, I only say this because I know you're you're a user of the tool and understand it. Can you double click a little bit on the usability? Because I know you're a big fan of how we're set up and how someone mm -hmm. builds a pipeline and 
And I think ease of use is another benefit here that, that maybe the audience would want to double click on. Yeah. So if you take uh, Matlena, as I said earlier, uh, every table needs to be a component, right? So every table needs to be authenticated with a user ID or a password or uh, some secret key given by the Salesforce or created and they are stored in library. You have to pull, you have to pull this information, validate it, and then you have to run it. It's a tedious manual process. If you take Hevo on the other side, now uh, once you create the connection to Salesforce, it's going to list you all the possible uh, tables that are available on Salesforce site. So all you have to do is choose which table you need to push it into Snowflake. Just click, click of a button, everything. There's no typing, there's no drag and drop, nothing. It's all clicks. So you click it, choose it, and then go to uh, Schema Mapper. There's an option called auto, auto Mapping. If you're not worried about how many fields you load, how many rows you're loading, how much quantity of uh, uh, volume of data you load, just click auto mapping everything is set automatically by the system itself and then when you test the connection if it's all fine and you click continue the loading happens the table is automatically created in the snowflake environment plus data is also pushed uh, as you mentioned i'm a usability person right minimum clicks maximum output that's what i always expect Love with that. respect to hevo it's the best because I don't want, uh, you know, uh, take my hands off the trackpad or uh, mouse and do so many typings or so much of uh, typings. That makes me very uncomfortable. It's personal opinion. But uh, Hevo, very light, ty light typing, including login. It's just a login with a Google. I click it, I just log in, that's it. So nowhere I have to take my hand off the trackpad. It's very easy, very simple. Uh, the best, the, the design is so easy. So you don't need anybody, uh, any experts uh, to guide you how to use the tool. You log in, look at all the options there, you will know how what to do. That's simple it is. So yeah, I mean, I like Hebo. Yeah, and I love that story. I think you had an analyst who like got a pipeline running in very oh. short order. Uh, yeah, on. she's a, a new join in the team because I lost two data engineers recently. Uh, when she, she was going to use Hebo for the first time, but she did not have an idea how to do it. Uh, she had to, the instruction, the task was to bring a Google Sheet uh, data into Snowflake. So I pulled her into a Zoom call, uh, logged into, you have to the notice the activities, right? I open Chrome, uh, I log into Hevo, uh, I click uh, create pipeline, enter search for Google Sheets, click it, and then uh, um, enter that uh, path, the URL. Uh, enter the username and password. I use my own username and password. Test connection. Click continue. The data is there in Snowflake. Just guess how many minutes it took. Less than six minutes. Yeah. That that I mean, efficient uh, the tool is. I'm not exaggerating. It's a fact. It just happened last week. It just happened last week. I know. I like. Uh, hopefully, uh, marketing. You guys are paying attention. I love minimum clicks, maximum output. We might have to steal that. Maybe we have to. Oh. Uh, work out a royalty on that. Um, okay, so so these benefits are obviously awesome, and they're mm -hmm. super fun to hear about. However, you know, uh, I find myself personally as CRO in a lot of conversations with customers and or with prospects, I should say. And you know, as 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 a practitioner who's been through multiple pipeline tool migrations, um, the next part I want to talk about is a little bit about okay, how much pain was there in getting off of Matillion onto Hevo. I think that's a big blocker for a lot of prospects where they're like, yeah, I would love that. I would love to modernize and move to ELT. Um, I would love to redo my pipelines and save costs on my pipeline tool, but time, cost, risk, like that, right? Tough. So um, would love to chat a little bit about sort of your experience, best practices, like how did you do it? How did you scope the work? How much time did it take? So I know you guys migrated 60, 70 pipelines. We'd love to hear a little bit about how long that took, how much effort was that, best practices, et cetera. Walk, walk us through it. Sure. So when we migrated the pipelines, more than 70, honestly, uh, it took us less than three weeks to do it. Um, see, how did we do it? Is we just planned it first. Uh, anyway, Hevo has to load all the pipelines. The new pipelines need to be created in uh, Hevo, but it's not as difficult as what we faced in Maclean. It's very easy click-throughs. With respect to uh, 
dbt that's where the transformation happens a lot of effort is expected was expected but what how we planned it we retained the naming conventions uh, what we used during Matillion uh, loading process right for example if uh, you have created a database called Matillion under the database you created a schema let's call it salesforce and then you loaded all the tables let us assume that you used the same uh, api names as in uh, salesforce right so what we did is we during the transition we created another database that is uh, let us we called it staging under that we created a, a schema called salesforce and we loaded the table as is we read in the same name uh, like what we had in Matillion, the source API names, right? In case you had changed the names, the target tables, uh, destination table names, you have to make the same change in Hugo also because Hugo gives you the option to either retain the same name or change it to a different one. We retained it. Now, once the pipeline is built, we have to move, uh, we have to uh, make these changes in dbt model to point to the right location where the data must be sourced from, right? It was very simple. Uh, do you mind if I share my desktop and uh, show a demo? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think okay. this is a big question people have that, and a lot of times it's like, well, do I, do I keep my existing schema and map Hevo to it, or do I use the Hevo schema? And I think this is this is a question that comes up a lot. So I, people, I'm sure, would love to see how you do it. Sure. Yeah. So I hope you can all see this. Yep. This is I duplicated. Uh, uh, an existing model so if you look at it it's a it's a, it's a thousand line query we have a lot of sub queries running in between so if you look at the row number 27 the highlighted one it's coming from the production environment we don't have to worry about all we have to we are worried about is the uh, so staging environment related tables here I just gave a name ETL underscore one and it's coming that's the database name Salesforce is the schema name and opportunity is the table name. Similarly, we have uh, profile staging, we have role staging, we have user staging and half a dozen more uh, tables are uh, available towards the end of the query. So how do I uh, make the change is just uh, select ETL. If you are using Mac, it's command F, ETL is populated here. All I have to do is the new point to the new database name that is staging, right? So I'm just doing uh, change all, it's all done. How do I know that it runs properly? So there's an option, just click preview. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's a server error. Hold on a second. Every demo on the history of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what went wrong. Let me refresh it. So if you click the preview, uh, if there is no error pointed in the 10 to 15 minutes, because this query is, uh, is quite a big one, it may take more than a minute to load all the data. Um, so what we normally do is we click the preview and then when there is no error populated by the dbt, query is done. So we'll abort the query, save it and go ahead with the changes. So this plan, this kind of a planning saved a lot of manual efforts. You understand right because it's a very simple change all you have to do is change the data name database name that's all yeah let me try again yeah, yeah so, so sorry there's there is a uh, this is not that uh, usual error we face because when there is a error it's populated here do you see lineage uh, currently yeah. unavailable so i think uh, dbt is down or something i'm so sorry about this but this yeah, is how uh, we plan our work yeah so in the end the strategy is you keep the Hevo schema and then just go into DBT and change the name and basically yes. your, your downstream is is therefore protected or, or back up live, I guess. 100%. Nothing will be impacted because uh, the uh, production environment table names are going to remain the same. Only the staging environment, the raw data source needs to be changed and this is how we do it. So it's all how you plan. No, uh, you have to have a coordination between Matillion data model as well as uh, Evo. If you replicate the same, you will have very less efforts to be employed. So you basically do this find and replace. Well, yes. Let me, well, let me grab the share back because I know we, we're going to talk about, um, I, I guess we've got another best practice before we talk about like how do you calculate how much time it's going to take because obviously you guys did 
60 to 70 pipelines or 70 plus pipelines in three weeks. And I think, I know you've got a rubric there on, on how long it you should plan to do a migration. But before getting there, I know we have mm -hmm. one other sort of best practice that we wanted to cover. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Hevo, there are some tables or some objects uh, will have uh, heavy load, you know, uh, so it is an insert only mo model. Uh, the number of uh, rows could be in millions uh, from few hundred thousands or into millions. So you have to build your Hevo pipeline in such a way that uh, no queue, uh, queues queue happen at the uh, snowflake environment. So when you are pushing the data uh, for a lot of, uh, for a quite a good number of tables, if they are all smaller and if you are aware of sitting in snowflake is good, it will be processed in seconds. But if the data to be pushed is huge and the snowflake picks it up first, what happens is all the rest of the small tables, right, they will be placed in queue. So not only snowflake charges for the uh, table in execution, it charges for every table that is also in queue. This is, trust me when I say this, this will cost you in thousands and thousands of dollars every month. Okay, so you have to be very clear about it. So first, load all the uh, heavy tables first and then give an ample time 15 minutes or 30 minutes and then uh, create a separate pipeline for loading all the smaller tables so similarly when you're loading the data from transform data from staging to production environment you have to have the same uh, logic applied uh, when there are more, more complex uh, queries or calculations involved a uh, lot of joins happening between different tables. It may take a while for the data to be loaded from staging to production environment. So for run them first, after 15 minutes or 30 minutes gap, run the other uh, set of tables, okay? Also, uh, where we make, uh, where we normally make mistakes is at 10 o'clock, let us assume that 10 o'clock uh, table is loading. Let's make sure that the associated DBT query does not run at 10 o'clock. It needs to be run at 10.15 or at least at 10.30. So that will give ample time for Hevo to push the push all the data into staging environment before the DBT job is done. You got that right? These are some of the basic things. Of course, many of us don't pay attention, but uh, only when we hit some hurdle, uh, we'll understand what's going on. So if you pay attention from the beginning, the fixing the issues, the manual effort uh, needed in maintaining these pipelines will reduce considerably. Yeah, no, that was super uh, interesting about managing the snowflake cost by mm -hmm. managing your ETL flows. Uh, super interesting because I know you guys not only got savings from the licensing cost of the ETL itself, but also reduced total TCO uh, or total cost of ownership by doing yes. that. So again, I'm sure you'll probably have some questions around this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, nobody does this for fun, but it's doable. And the way you, the, the best practice is to, you know, change the, the table names in DBT. Now let's talk a little bit about how long that takes you because I was pretty shocked when you said, hey, no, we, we did 70 pipelines. It wasn't that big a deal. Why don't you take us through the rubric on how you think about the time it takes to migrate stuff? Um, see, no, it's all clicks, right? I told you, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are loading uh, same data many times a day. A set of uh, tables are required to load um, every 15 minutes and then every one hour, two hours, four hours, six hours and 24 hours time frames, right? Uh, so it's not just uh, one pipeline, same pipeline could be uh, used in different uh, schedules and because of the targeted audience, right? So when uh, such transition happens, the best thing what uh, uh, he would does is it's simple as I said all the tables are listed so when I create a pipeline I choose the necessary tables um, map it or um, enable auto mapping push the data into the uh, target system if you compare it with what we did in the Matillion, we have to have by default I don't know I still don't understand the logic there's something called start we have to have this component first and then uh, pull on Salesforce component uh, attached to it, give for the uh, table or the object level information, user ID, password, secret key, everything, enable it, test it, run it, and then you will know what happens. No such uh, complications here because all these user ID passwords are at the pipeline level, not at table level. 
planet. Okay, so in this way, uh, even if you are creating hundred new pipelines, it's all a matter of uh, in a week's time you can create hundred pipelines. Trust me, I have done it. The three weeks is an exaggeration because it also involved uh, uh, some uh, learnings, uh, some fixings issues, and uh, something we encountered. But if you have, we are we were not trained by anybody. Uh, if you if you are aware of it, we were not trained by anybody. We were all self starting guys. So it took a little time to adapt to the situation where we learned it all by ourselves. If you have little training, uh, some sample uh, uh, connections and loading the table. 100 pipelines can be achieved in two weeks or maximum three weeks time. Yeah, yeah. No, and I, I uh, joked earlier because I'm bummed you didn't get a chance to uh, take advantage of it. But in addition, now mm -hmm. we at Evo have some AI generation where we can actually rebuild a pipeline. So we'll suck the metadata out of another ELT platform and rebuild the pipelines in Hebo. And, and then all you have to do is the downstream DBT changes so we've mm -hmm. even made that faster. Um, and then on the on the per table, on the DBT side, let's talk a little bit about that. I know we saw your demo on how you do your find and replace, but it sounds like you're saying, hey, you know, sh you know I, I guess a minimum is one to two minutes. How much time should somebody budget to like do the find and replace, test it in the preview? You know, how, how long does it take to change? Because basically you just add up your tables times however many minutes and that's the time we should budget, right? Um, honestly, I did not plan anything for this because uh, it's a negligible time frame. Uh, if somebody says that I need a day to uh, make all those changes, the uh, changes what I demoed, uh, if they say they need a, a day's time to make uh, changes to 10 tables, I'll definitely laugh at them because uh, it's 10 minutes work or less than that. See, you change um, all the models, uh, search for all, uh, modify all, save it, commit towards the end. How long does it is going to take right so, so uh, no budgeting unless and until the employee is uh, you know somebody who's not really efficient yeah yeah so it'll be interesting to see uh, if we have any questions on that because i suspect there's uh, data practitioners out there who are like hey i'm, I'm nervous about this like how long is this going to take and i love that claim to fame um so with that being said uh I think what we ought to do is uh, potentially open it up for questions here, unless you have any any closing thoughts. I mean, from my perspective, again, we're super pleased that ThoughtSpot's our customer. I love the the benefits that you got out of moving to uh, to Hevo. I'm even more impressed with you know understanding you know the effort and how you went about the migration itself. Um, I don't know if you have any closing closing thoughts on that topic. Otherwise, we can just move into Q and A mode. Now, mostly those topics will be covered in the questions and answer session, I suppose. So uh, we'll go ahead. Okay. So I guess uh, folks out in the audience, please type in any questions that you have for Ram. Obviously, he's been through uh, the modernization journey not once, but like three times. Um, and so I'm sure he's got some best practices for you. I see one question out here right now, which was, um, hey, you know, what was your evaluation criteria when you put, picked uh, cloud ELT. I know uh, at the beginning you mentioned, hey, I looked up top 10 ELT tools and luckily for us, Hebo showed up. Uh, who else did you evaluate? What were your thoughts? How, how did we end up getting selected? Um, so it was love at first sight. I told you, right? Hebo was the name that uh, um, okay, um, you know, captured my attention. I did not want to move beyond that. I was stuck. I'm being very honest. I don't have to exaggerate. I'm being very honest. I was stuck. Uh, then uh, when a situation came that people were questioning first before we started uh, uh, testing it out when people questioned that it's an unknown player in the field how do we have to should we really go ahead when i said uh, i made a point that even thoughtspot was once a new player in the field if our first customer had the same thought we would not be here where we are now so let's you know take the risk it's okay but in two weeks they gave a very positive feedback uh, the evaluation criteria, if you ask, first was cost. See, our data operations is not making any revenue. We are cost to the organization, right? So we uh, wanted to keep it at the minimum. So first was cost. As I said, when we moved from Maltrix to Matillion, we saved some cost. When Matillion moved from Matillion to Hevo, 
more than 60% of cost saved in uh, ETL ELT tool alone. The overall infrastructure it came down 75-80% but let us stick to this part cost. Second is I am a, uh, I told you right, usability person, minimum clicks, maximum output. Nothing, no other tool can come close to Hivo at this moment. Maybe somebody in the future, but at this moment, Hivo is the number one. Third, design. The thought process behind how each page is organized, how each clicks, meaningful clicks, no unnecessary pages, and uh, tips on the side. Right? When you are going to engage, when you are going to uh, add Google Sheet for the first time, you are getting the uh, tips on the right side, telling you what you should do, what you should focus on. Uh, so that was best. I don't have to click the help file, open a separate window, uh, you know, command tab between both and check what I'm doing. No, it's all there on the right side. So the usability was a major factor for us. Third, uh, I logged in to check if there are any features added. Uh, this morning before uh, the session. Before that, I don't know when did I log in because uh, we have all the pipelines we need. There are no downtime uh, errors, and because of uh, one data engineer using his own ID to authenticate the uh, pipeline, it failed. Otherwise, we d we don't normally enter into Hue at all. The new data engineer I'm talking about, uh, that person is two months old. Okay, but for the first time she logged in because we never had to uh, log into Hivo, no issues, because there was no issues. So you understand well, the peace of mind we have, right? Otherwise in Matillion we were always wondering when we were sleeping, if it fails, data load fails, 90% of our data uh, users, end users are in US. Imagine the scenario when three or four important pipelines fail, we are, you know, we are deep sleep. When we wake up in the morning from CEO to um, admin person, they'll all be waiting for us. Yeah. That much of scenario, but he will removed all those uh, scenarios. We, it's good. It's really fantastic using. So cost, uh, ease of using the tool, UI particularly, and then uh, no, downtown, uh, no downtime uh, issues we faced. These are three important factors uh, we looked at. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, in fact, we didn't talk about this in the in the prep, but that's one of the advantages we have. Hevo, we're sort of open twenty four seven. Companies, you know, primarily based in India, and we service the world, yeah. right? We have customers in forty countries, so we yeah. sort of grew up that way. <laughs> yeah. um, we're, we're starting to get some other questions here, which is great. So I got one for you about. Well, actually, here's one back. We'll stick on topic. There's a question here about. Um, what were other tools you were evaluating alongside? So, hey, Ram, we heard that you found Hebo online. What were other, you know, uh, other tools that you evaluated? Did you look at any others and, and what were your thoughts? No, as I said, uh, it was love at first sight, right? Uh, but there was some pressure from different corner of uh, the organization. They were because uh, they were partners. Uh, Five Trend was uh, being pushed. Uh, but the final decision uh, need to be taken by me. So I said, no, it was just Hevo. Because uh, we used the Fivetron earlier, a few years ago, we used Fivetron earlier, but uh, it was not all that great. Awesome. Um, then I have another one about the structure of your team. So it says, hey, what is the structure of your team? Has that changed when you move from on-prem to cloud? You know, one interesting thing here, and, and uh, I've talked to other customers about this, which is like, okay, where is the data engineering work done? Is it done in the line of business or only through your centralized team? And I don't know if that's what this person is getting at, but tell us about the structure of your team and if it changed along your iterations. No, it has not changed. The R structure remains the same. We had two data engineers and uh, uh, three analysts. Uh, one was placed in the uh, US. Uh, the analyst was placed in US, the other person was in Canada. The move happened very recently after the uh, transition from uh, Matlian to Hevo. Uh, so the structure remains the same. Even now, after the two engineers quit, we have uh, we are replaced with. So they are they have been replaced with two more engineers. Plus, uh, at this moment, we have only two analysts. We are searching for the third one. Uh, otherwise, it's intact. Got it. Got it. And that team builds all the pipelines for for all those cross-functional teams who are looking yes. for data. Boarding. Yep, only two engineers. See, that's what uh, um, in the previous organization, if you take uh, the Zion's uh, bank corporation uh, in Utah, 
to create certain uh, pipeline they had uh, ETL, we call them uh, we don't call them data engineers we call them etl developers uh, there were at least a half a dozen etl developers to load 160 tables 160 tables no pipelines it's just straight tables unstructured data so for more than half a dozen ETL developers are working we are handling approximately uh, 800 to 900 tables 7 trillion uh, sorry um, yeah 7 um, trillion rows uh, close to wow. and of course 26 or 27 pipelines if I'm not uh, wrong just two data engineers are managing yeah so how is it possible because we have the um, efficient tool in hand yep amazing um I don't see any other questions, but I do see a bunch of folks still online. Uh, hey folks, if you've got a question, this guy's lived through Informatica to Alteryx to Matillion to Hebo, uh, and he is in the thick of modern stack as the head of data engineering for Matillion. So if you got any questions, uh, we'll, we'll keep the queue open here uh, for a couple more minutes. Um, otherwise, obviously Ram, uh, it's been a pleasure to get to know you through the process here of getting a webinar put together. Uh, obviously, as the head sales guy, you know, love to see the results, love to hear about the the migration and some of the best practices. Uh, and it's been a real pleasure uh, sharing your story with uh, the rest of the folks in the audience. Um, so thank you pleasure. again for your participation. Sure, thanks um, for the invite. More... Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, let's see, anybody else? Otherwise, we'll... Uh, We'll set our ticker here. We'll maybe give one more minute. If anybody else, I'd still see quite a few folks on there. Anybody else? I guess this isn't your last chance because you can hit up Ram online on his LinkedIn, but I'm sure he's got a wealth of advice for all you data engineers out there uh, who are living through this stuff every day. Um, just right. one point uh, before we wind up. Um, when we say we reduce the infrastructure cost, the biggest cost uh, is always from Snowflake, right? So we figured out uh, the ways how to minimize the cost uh, based on the end users as well as uh, the warehouse consumption timings, the busy times. Uh, we structured in such a way, uh, we reduced 20 to 25% of the consumption price within a month's time. It still continues. So in case you need any ideas or tips on how to reduce costs on the downstream, let me know. Yeah, I mean, that was super interesting in how you designed the Hebo flows in order to yeah. reduce Snowflake costs. I'm sure you have other tips and tricks on yes. managing Snowflake. Uh, and, and folks, feel free to ask those questions. Again, hit up Ram online on LinkedIn uh, as well if, if you're uh, blanking out on what questions to ask at the moment. All right. Well, with that, uh, I will close it down. Uh, thanks again for everybody who attended. Ram, thanks again for uh, you know supporting Hebo as a business uh, and and supporting the pipelines internal to ThoughtSpot. We're we're a big fan of ThoughtSpot ourselves. So, thanks again. Thank and you. We'll talk to everybody soon. Thank sure, you. Thank you all. Bye. See ya.